Hey everyone, welcome to another $1,000 strap search. I've got my $1,000 in singles here and I'm about to show you what I found. But before I do, let's talk about this week's tip. Now, I've referred to paper money as historical documents numerous times. I mean, you've got a date, so you know when it was made. You know what was represented uh, by what's on the note. And that's true whether you're talking about a current note or if you're talking about notes from 100 or 200 years ago. It's always neat to see the things that they thought were important. So, yeah, it is truly a historical document. Now, with that being said, we all understand that this is still currency. And if you're looking at a 1862 $1 legal tender, that also was currency. But sometimes, when you're in this collect or into this uh, hobby, you may truly enjoy dipping your finger occasionally into the actual historical documents. Um, you're going to run across them because they kind of merge with the hobby. Anybody who's interested in stuff like this is also probably going to have a little bit of an interest in the document side. You don't need a letter written by a congressman to a person, a constituent, uh, to be considered a historical document. There are things that kind of merge the two. And uh, I happened to pick up one or two of them that I thought were interesting, and I'm going to share one of them with you today, but that's a little later. Right now, we're going to see what I've got in my search. So there's the thousand singles. We'll get them out of the way and take a look at what I found. Starting off, this is not a Where's George. This is just a stamp that says, have a good day, needencouragement.com. I did not go there to see what it actually says, but I thought it was neat that I found a stamp. Whenever I find any note stamp with anything, I tend to pull it and I show it. More often than not, it's going to go back in circulation. I just think it's neat to see what people choose to stamp on bills. Um, here's an interesting one. Somebody stamped, Trump is a chump. I wonder how many viewers are going to unsubscribe this week because I said something bad about Trump. I, I don't care. This is a note that was stamped in circulation and uh, I found it, I pulled it, I showed it. Whether I agree or disagree or whether you agree or disagree is irrelevant. The point is I found it in circulation and I'm going to show it because I found it. If that offends you, um, pull up your big boy pants. I don't know what else to tell you. Found a Where's George? Uh, track this bill at wheresgeorge.com. So after this video, I will be logging this one. And I got another Where's George with that particular stamp on it. I've seen this one quite a few times. And then what do we got here? This is an alternator. 49434940. If that zero was a three, and I know ifs and buts, then it would have been a full-blown repeater with 49434943. Not the case, no additional value. I just think it's neat whenever I spot an alternator because they're not the easiest to spot. They have no additional value, but it's still kind of neat to find. And who knows, maybe I'll pair one of these. Then I've got my trinaries, zeros, ones, and fives. And of course, we'll touch on this again. Trinaries are worthless. The only reason I pull them is because I'm trying to match serial numbers. And look at the, uh, what would you call it? the side effect of pulling trinaries. I know that they're worthless, okay? Which isn't true. They're actually worth a dollar because it's a dollar. But over the course of the few years that I've been doing this, I managed to put away $1,600 without even thinking about it. I can spend that $1,600 anytime I want, but I choose to keep it because I'm trying to match numbers. At some point, I will match enough different numbers that I will stop doing this. And then I can spend that 16, maybe two grand by that point. So yeah, what a great savings account just by putting these particular numbers away. If you have trouble saving money, here's a way to do it. <laughs> Quite literally, every time you find a trinary, put it away. Don't spend it. And set yourself a goal. I mean, you could do this with any number combination, to be honest. But, uh, all right, we'll get we'll get back there later. Anyway, if somebody tries to tell you trinaries are worth money, uh, just unsubscribe from them. All right, here's another trinary, zeros, ones, and nines. Uh, zeros, twos, and fours. 
Uh, this one is quads, quad threes. You can see the quads there. Quads also have no additional value, but I have a second box where I save quads. And once again, trying to match serial numbers, I have successfully done it. And once I get like 10 or 12 pairs, I'll probably just cash in that box. Once again, what a great savings account. Quad sixes and some stars. This one, you want to always check your stars to see if they're filled or not, because a filled star is actually an error. They'll, the grading companies will note that on the, on the note when you uh, send it in for grading. So that's a real error, unlike the hundreds and thousands of trinaries and quads. Anyway, this one is 2017A. I got another 2017A. 2013. Another 2013. 2013B. 2013 Star Note from New York. The duplicate range, they accidentally duplicated a bunch of serial numbers for this, and that's caused people to go crazy over these. Uh, but you have to have the ones that are in the duplicate range. The duplicate range are numbers 250,000 or less. And then it is 3.2 million to 9.6 million. And that would be 0, 3, 2, all the way up to 0, 9, 6. And since this one is 1, 1, well then no, it's not in the duplicate range. And then the older notes I found, 2003A, another 2003A. Once again, most of these have no additional value, but I know nobody saves them. They are, they are 20 years old, so I pull them. Uh, if they're too ratty, I'll set them back, but I tend to keep the better ones just to have some. Another 2003A, 2003A, and this way you get to see out of a thousand notes how many of these are still floating around. This one's a 2003 in really rough shape. 2001 in nice shape. Uh, 2001, 1999, another 99, another 99, another 99. 1995, checking to see if it's a web note. It is not. A web note will have no marking over here, and it will only have the plate number here. And then there's a mark on the back, too. But those are two easy ways to tell if you have a web note. 95, much better condition. 1993, also not a web note, but also really nice condition. 1988A, the first year for web notes. And it's an I note. That's neat. Another 88A. Nice shape. And the oldest note I found, this one's pretty cool. 1974 in decent shape as well. All right, so that those were my finds this week. What did I pull from my box? Well, this most certainly would qualify as a historical document. And I saw it, and for the price I saw it, I had to buy it. So let me just show you what I got here. This just so you know, feels like newspaper. It's printed essentially a newsprint. <clears throat> it's extremely thin. And you can read what it says. $1,000. Confederate States of America loan. Okay, what this is, is essentially a savings bond. It's a $1,000 savings bond from the Confederate States of America. And let's see if I can pick this up and try to show. It has been folded, so I'm not too worried about it. You can see 8%, and it says July 17th, 1868. That's when it was supposed to turn good. That was its maturity date. You can see it does have handwritten numbers right up top there. 20390. And when you read the text, it says, on the first day of July, 1868, the Confederate States of America will pay to the bearer of this bond at the state of or at the seat of government or uh, at such place of deposit as may be up, uh, appointed by the secretary of the treasury the sum of one thousand dollars with interest okay and when we read further the interest is eight percent if we check the bottom you can see the initials of who entered it and the initials of who recorded it and when we look over here, Richmond, this second day of March, 1863, signed by the Register of the Treasury. So this was issued March 2nd, 1863, and it was good for five years. 
and at that point you would get 8% interest. So your $1,000 investment in the Confederate States of America would end up being worth $1,080, right? Yes, because 10% would be $10. Or 1% would be $10, so 8% would be $80. Yes, your 1,000 would get you 1,080. And you can see it says the act, let's see, uh, the authorized act of the Congress of the CSA, Confederate States of America, February 20th, 1863. If we look at the back, you can see it has numerous stains. You can see the folds in it. Um, so yeah, not in the greatest of condition, but does this count as currency? No, people weren't spending these. I want to say that's Jefferson Davis. Isn't it? Yeah, that's Jefferson Davis up top there. Yeah, so you obviously weren't spending these. This was simply bought and sold uh, to support the Confederate States of America. And when you think about it, the average person today doesn't have a thousand dollars lying around well the uh the average person <laughs> but yeah the average person today doesn't have a thousand dollars lying around so who actually would have bought this that's the more impressive thing whose hands were on this was this some major company that bought this was this just a huge plantation owner um, it, it's just fascinating to think of where this came from to start with. And, uh, yeah, you most certainly have to call it a historical document. Now, we all know the result of the uh, Civil War, which means this became worthless. But is it? <laughs> That's the thing. How many of these are still around? I mean, clearly they issued 20,000 of them. Uh, that's quite a few. That's, what is it, $20 million, $20 million worth of bonds, at least? And they were not redeemed because the Confederate States of America did not exist in 1868. So there was no way to redeem them. But on paper, this thin, how many of them survived? I don't know. All I know is I find this to be a fascinating piece of history. Not a, not a portion that I support in any particular way, uh, but nonetheless still a fascinating part of our history. All right, guys, if you learned anything new, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.